Hi everyone, this is Andre. Welcome back to Math School EU. And I'm back with another educational video for you. Today we are going to talk about types of chemical reactions, balancing those reactions, and a few more stoichiometric calculations. The first type of reaction we're going to take a look at is called synthesis reaction. This is a pretty straightforward one. It follows the sequence of A, element A plus element B that is going to make AB, which is a compound. So for example, if we take magnesium and we're going to add nitrogen gas, remember nitrogen is going to come as N2. It's a diatomic element and they're going to make magnesium nitride. So here we got to balance the chemical equation. By balancing, what we mean is that we need the same number of atoms of magnesium on the right side and the left side, and same thing goes for the nitrogen. The nitrogen is already balanced because we got two nitrogens here and two here, but the magnesium is not. So we got three on the right and only one on the left. So what we do is we put a coefficient of three, which will make it now all balanced. Now another type of synthesis reaction is called a compound synthesis. So here we essentially have two compounds forming another compound. So if we have something like carbon dioxide gas with magnesium oxide, it is going to form magnesium carbonate. So two compounds, two molecules forming one molecule. That is a synthesis reaction. Now let's take a look at the opposite which is called a decomposition reaction. And decomposition reaction follows the sequence of AB with a compound that is going to break down into its atomic elements. So we're just going to have AB break down into A plus B. And as an example, we could go in reverse calcium carbonate uh, that through heat will make carbon dioxide gas and calcium oxide. Now another type of decomposition reaction will involve a metal hydroxide that through heat will break down into water and a metal oxide. Now this could also be a synthesis reaction if this was in reverse. So for example, if we have aluminum hydroxide that will then through heat will be broken down into water and aluminum oxide. Now in order to balance this reaction, we have to take a look at the number of atoms on each side. So we've got two aluminums here, just one aluminum. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a two in front and see how things balance out this way. We've got two aluminums, two aluminums. Great. We have six hydrogens because it's three multiplying into the bracket, then the two multiplying the entire compound. That is six hydrogens. Here we got two. Uh, so we're going to have to multiply this by 3 in order to make it 6. Now we have the aluminum and we have the oxygens or the hydrogens balanced. So let's get the oxygens balanced. Now we have 6 oxygens on the left. We've got 3 here and 3 here, 6 oxygens on the right. This equation is fully balanced. Next type of reaction is called single replacement. Now the replacement reactions that we're going to talk about are sometimes called displacement reactions. So just watch for the language right there. And a single dis replacement reaction is essentially going to have an element, for example, iron, that is going to replace another metal from this compound, from copper chloride. It's going to replace the copper and take its spot. So it's just replacing it or displacing it. And now, we end up with iron chloride and copper as the single metal. Now this is all due to a reactivity series. If we take a look at this reactivity series chart, we can see that the iron is over here and the copper is going to be lower. Copper is all the way down here. And so when you compare the two, their reactivity increases as you in, as you go up. So essentially, when the copper chloride is in an aqueous solution, meaning it's in water, and our iron is solid, what we do is we place the iron into the solution, 
And now the iron is going to bond, break the bond between chlorine and copper and bond with copper instead of, uh, instead of copper being bond to the chlorine. And it's going to take its spot simply because it's more reactive. And then copper will reside on its own and it's going to form a solid at the end. Now another type of reaction we can do following a, a simple reactivity series of nonmetals is going to be called halogen replacement. This is a type of single replacement reaction as well. So for example, if we have chlorine gas, again, chlorine is diatomic. And if we have sodium bromide, the chlorine is going to replace the bromine and we're going to end up with sodium chloride and bromine as the liquid here. Now let's balance the equation. We've got two bromines, so we need a two here. Uh, we've got two sodiums, but only one here, so we need a two there, and the chlorines are now balanced. Now the reactivity series of the non-metals or the halogens are not gonna be shown on this chart. It's not shown on typical charts. However, what we use is, we use a periodic trend where the highest halogen, fluorine, the one that's on the top, is going to be the most reactive. So then they just simply decrease in their reactivity as you head down the periodic table. And this is the way we're going to classify things when we're talking about halogen replacement. So the reason why chlorine replaces and kicks out the bromine is because it's more reactive. So when it is in a solution, it's going to force it out. And now bromine is going to become its own uh, liquid and NaCl will form because they're simply more attracted to each other than the bromine. Next type of reaction to discuss is double replacement. For example, if we have silver nitrate, VgNO3, that is going to be mixed with magnesium chloride, we will get silver chloride and magnesium nitrate. Now take a moment to balance this chemical equation. So the answer here is going to be two and two there in order to balance the entire thing. And what we get forming here is called a precipitate. So this uh, silver uh, chloride will be called a precipitate that forms inside the solution. So literally you have, you're going to have two liquid solutions. And when you mix those two together, you're going to have silver chloride forming as crystals at the bottom of the solution. And this is also called a precipitation reaction. Now you might ask uh, how come these are replacing each other and they're switching spots since uh, silver is really far down on the reactivity series and magnesium is really high up. So how do they even manage to replace themselves? Well, uh, they do not follow a simple reactivity series. They follow uh, other rules and laws of solubility. So we're going to discuss those in the solubility unit in the next few lectures. Next type of reaction involves neutralization. And the neutralization is simple. It is between an acid and a base when the two are added together they're going to form water and salt. So for example, if we have um, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, a strong acid and a strong base, and what we get is going to be water and NaCl. So as you can see, OH goes together with the hydrogen to form water, sodium and chlorine form NaCl. Next, complete combustion. This one will involve a carbohydrate that will be burned in oxygen with an excess of oxygen, which is important. And they will produce carbon dioxide, gas, and water vapor. So it's important that this is in excess because if it isn't, this is not going to occur. So the only times you're going to have a complete combustion happening where the products are only carbon dioxide and water is when you have an excess of oxygen. So abundance of oxygen available, more than we need for the reaction to occur. So as an example, we could use methane gas. And if we burn methane at 
high temperatures and oxygen is available in excess. We're going to get carbon dioxide and water. And you can take a moment to balance this chemical reaction. In the end, we have a two in front of the oxygen and we have a two in front of the water. In contrary, incomplete combustion involves other products. So here we're going to have a carbohydrate that will react with a limited oxygen. So this is limited and we will get carbon that is solid. We're going to get carbon dioxide. We'll have carbon monoxide and water. So many products. Carbon monoxide here is toxic. It's a toxic gas, invisible, can't smell it, can't see it, um, can't hear it. As an example, we could use C3H8. That's a gas as well. We're going to have our oxygen. This is propane. And if it's burned under limited oxygen supply, we're going to get carbon, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and water. So again, take a moment to balance this reaction. So as you can see, depending on the oxygen supply, it will lead to two different reactions, complete and incomplete combustion. Next, we'll take a look at the, the stoichiometric question. So we have an equation, it's already balanced for us, so that's super nice, sometimes it won't be. And we are given 1.6 grams of methane that are completely burned and eight grams of oxygen, meaning we have an excess of oxygen and there will be some leftovers. Uh, and it will produce 4.4 grams of carbon dioxide, cool. So what mass of oxygen is left unreacted? Now, if that's the question, we first need to figure out what is the mass of oxygen that did react proportionately to the CH4? So we are going to start with what's given to us, as always, for stoichiometric questions. 1.6 grams of methane. And we're going to turn that into moles. That's the first thing that we typically want to do. Uh, so it's, it's given to us that oxygen is 16, uh, carbon is 12, and we've got four hydrogens. So that's going to be also 16 grams of CH4. That makes one mole of CH4. Now here the grams cancel with the grams and we are at moles of methane. Now we want to see and translate the moles of methane to the number of moles of oxygen that we will be using. And to do that, we simply use the coefficients that are given to us in the equation. So one mole of methane, as we have here, one, will um, be used in reacting with two moles of oxygen gas. And we can cancel those here. So now we're at moles of oxygen gas. We need to find the grams of oxygen gas, the gas being reacted. And we know that one mole of oxygen gas will have the molar mass 16 for one oxygen but we got two oxygen so that's 32 grams of for one mole of O2 and the moles will cancel with the moles and if we do the calculation correctly our answer should be 6.4 grams of oxygen used and so if that's how much oxygen is used we just take the eight 0 0.00 grams and we subtract 6.4 grams and we're going to be left with 1.6 grams of oxygen in excess. In that case, the answer to the question will be B. This concludes our lecture for today. Click on the next video to learn more about solutions.